Hey guys, it's Sam from Smoky Mountain Rides. I thought I would do something a little different today just because I thought it may be helpful for someone. Um, I'm in the process of remodeling my house now and I wanted to get the hardwood floors refinished. Um, I'm like the cheapest person in the world. I don't like to pay for anything. Um, I'm the kind of guy that was like when I was dating, I would drive in reverse through McDonald's drive through so my date would have to pay. That kind of cheap. Um, so I don't like to pay for things, and I got a couple quotes to do hardwood floors throughout my whole house, and it was like four or five thousand dollars or some ass that number like that, and I guess they'd do a professional job and it would look perfect again. But I'm not really looking for perfect. I want to, uh, I guess, enrich the look of the home, and I still like the old characteristics. My house was built in the 50s, so it's like 70 some odd years old, and some of the character I really like. So I thought I would go this route. Um, so this is what I do. So as you can tell now, this side of the floor, and I'm in just in the initial stages now, this side of the floor has been done, and this side has it. Now what I've done is when I first moved in, I pulled up carpet that was in here since probably the late 80s, early 90s, and underneath, underneath a thousand staples, but anyway, that's another story. Um, but underneath there was kind of this gross, you know, cloudy looking hardwood paint from 70 years dripped on the floor um just just a mess old stains uh black spots like this where the carpet would be sitting and there was a lot of people standing in that area and it just just kind of gross this is a way you can do this it's totally cheap and it looks really awesome um so what i did and this is no sanding i want to reiterate this is literally no sanding i did not sand a thing uh, because I don't really think, like I said, I'm not looking for a new floor. I'm looking to restore a uh, floor with a little character. So what I did is I bought uh, one of these jobs, one gallon of acetone from Home Depot. Uh, you don't need to use acetone. You can use nail polish remover, but I would not recommend buying, buying a thousand bottles of that. Um, I started to do that, but it takes a little more, you know, it takes a little more. So you might as well spend, I think this was like $20, and I think you can get it at Walmart too for about $20. So I'm sure it's just common. It doesn't have to be this brand. But basically what you do is, we, and I'll start on this corner here, and you can see the floor, the difference. It's crap, right? So what we're gonna do, and you're just gonna kind of splash it down on the floor. And you're going to kind of run where it's going to go. And don't use a cloth, uh, a cloth, but use something like your hand. And you're just going to try to push it and let it sit like that. You know, rubber gloves work good, but you're going to just kind of let it sit on the, on the paint. Just let it sit for a minute. Um, I, what I've done, and it works best for me, is I would just do so many planks at a time. Um, just in case there is any discoloring or anything like that. It's a little more palatable if... One looks a certain way and one doesn't, rather than, you know, streaks and things like that. So just let that sit for a minute. Now it's kind of hard with one hand. And just kind of work it into the areas and let it sit and let it eat that paint up. Then what you're going to want to do is grab an old cloth. And this is what I'm using, this cloth, it doesn't matter. It's an old washcloth or something. So then you just take some on the cloth and then you're just going to go back. And you're just going to start rubbing it. Now, guys, this takes a lot of elbow grease, okay? This isn't going to be done. This isn't going to be done in an hour, you know, depending on the size of the room. And it really helps if you let the, the acetone sit on the spots a little longer um, because it's easier to come off. But I'm impatient, so I usually start just scrubbing it early. And like I said, it does take elbow grease. This is, you know, it's it's... It's easy, I mean, as in do it yourself, but it's not easy if you're a complete lazy person. You'll be like, oh, that sucks. But it's an inexpensive, easy way. It just takes a little bit of elbow grease. So um, that's been sitting there a minute up top, and I let the corners sit a little longer just because that tends to be the area I don't want to touch, like trim and stuff. So I want it to come off fast. And if, this way, you can just go along the edge here. And... The, really, the only place you want to go this way is on the edges, and that's just so you can get in the cracks like that. But I would highly recommend going this way on the, uh, and see it's coming off really easy now because it's been sitting, um, going this way on the planks. You can do it this way, but if you do it 
I'll do a little bit here. If you do it for a few minutes scrubbing away, you'll notice there's like that. And you can usually get it out, but it will do that. So you're better off just saving that for later. So just go through it like that. And just work on the floor. Okay, like I said, I'm about halfway done now. The floor looks amazing the way it is. Um, once I get this completely done, I'll show you guys how to finish it up. And you'll be shocked what kind of floor you can have with a little bit of elbow grease and about 50 bucks. We'll be back in a minute. Um, while I'm at it, there's one thing I should also mention as well. Um, acetone, you don't want to be breathing these fumes unless you're a moron like me. In most cases, I would advise you opening the window, okay? But it's hot outside, and my AC is on, and I don't, I'm, a, I, I'm brain dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. But I would highly recommend opening a window. The fumes are pungent, um, and it doesn't help to, uh, or it doesn't hurt to put on, you know, something like Avenged Sevenfold or maybe in a pinch Lady Gaga. Uh, but I would definitely stay away from anything from like Chris Stapleton or the Eagles. So we'll wrap this up in a bit and then we'll get to the, to the uh, finish. Okay, so at this stage of the game, the entire floor has been stripped down with the acetone. Scrubbed it. And once I was done with the acetone, what I did was um, took a scrub brush and a cloth because I'm super anal about cracks and stuff and just scrubbed the shit out of it with a a mop and a bucket, bucket of water and a brush. Wiped it down, so it's pretty spotless right now. Um, and for most intense, theoretically, you could probably leave it like this and most people would be like, it's fine. Um, now keep in mind, guys, like I said before, I I'm not going for a new floor here. That's not the whole goal here. The goal is to refurbish the character of the room. It took 70 years for this floor to look like this, and I want to kind of preserve that. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, so now that that's done, I went ahead and bought a gallon of this Zep. It's called Zep Wet Look Floor Polish. Um, immediately you'll see, reading the label, it says do not use on wood. You can use it on wood, trust me. It works really well. Um, it costs like 30 bucks for a gallon of it. And what we're going to do is uh, take a cloth and we're going to you know, put some on the floor and we're going to give it a good once over um, and then let it dry half an hour and then give it another coat, let it dry another half an hour and so on and so forth. And we will see if it needs more than three coats. Now, I can read the comments already. I know people are going to be like, oh, you know, don't do this. It's not professional. And, uh, you know, the professionals are always the one that tell you to never do anything at home. And that's because they want to make money off of you. That's their job. So it's going to work. It's going to work fine. It looks beautiful and it's very durable. And I will follow up with you guys momentarily. One thing that, that I should mention as well, as you're applying it, just keep moving fast and move with the wood grain. Another thing you're going to want to look out for is that. It'll rub out after a few seconds, but just when you set it down, be careful you don't let it sit too long. But once you wipe it with a couple coats, it'll go away. Um, so be careful for that. Okay, so there's one coat done. I've backed myself into a corner and I'm about to leave the room. But it already looks amazing. That's one coat, guys. I still have about two more coats to put on and we're gonna wait about a half an hour, but it looks incredible. I'll follow up with you after the second coat. Now for some, perhaps, Aerosmith. So there you have it. I put four coats of the Zap stuff down, or Zep. Um, and it turned out really good. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, the last coat, I really was splashing it on there and just, you know, sending it. But I didn't videotape everything because honestly, it's really kind of hard to mess up. I wish you could see this shine. It just looks so beautiful. I did it in the closet. Um, now I know what people are going to say, oh you could have used polyurethane and all that, but I don't like working with polyurethane and I'm sure it would last longer. Um, but this usually lasts a long time for, what, for how much effort I put into it. Uh, so yeah, there it is. Hardwood floor, total makeover for 50 bucks. And maybe not even quite 50 because I still have half of the, uh, the Zep left. You could do another couple rooms this 
you know this large and i did um like i said i did four coats so thanks for watching